Hey, my name's Shutik. I just had another one of my blackouts. And when I came to, I found this, the 1776 Multiplex Echo. It even has the mod board installed. This pedal emulates three different delays. The Echoplex EP3, which is an iconic and fairly standard tape delay. The Benson Echo Rec, and in this mode, it gives you one long repeat and then faster subsequent delays. And finally, the Roland RE201, which gives you dual rhythmic repeats. Today we're going to look at the controls, listen to some sound samples, and then cover my build notes. First we have delay 1. This sets the delay time for IC3. Then we have delay 2. This sets the delay time for IC2. Each of these ICs is a PT2399. This is commonly known as the karaoke chip because it was often used to add delay to karaoke machines. The chip introduces a little noise, but this also adds character. Here we have feedback. This is the number of echoes. Mix. This is the balance between the wet mm. and dry. Give me my kiss. Signal. Tape mode allows you to select between the three different delay types. For those in the audience with a traumatic brain injury, those three types are Echo Rec, RE201, and the EP3. Here we have the tape speed, which is a momentary switch that can be held down to slowly speed up the delay. Releasing it will slow things back down to where they started. I'll be recording today using a Fernandez Strat, which has stonewall pickups in all three positions. The pickups in this are hand wounds. I've got signature strats in the neck and middle position. The chunky looking guy on the bridge is a third eye. It's a single coil pickup. My amp is a Cheria Tone British style 18 watt I built. Here's what this sounds like without the multiplex engaged. Let's start our tour of the delay without modulation engaged. This is going to build sexual tension. First up is echo rec mode. When you play with the delay, you have to learn to lean into the delay. You want to play with it. It's its own instrument almost. If you try to fight this, you're always going to sound sloppy and like you're off tempo. Remember, the delay has its own tempo. You want to play with it, not against it. Now let's try the EP3. Lastly, let's try the RE201 mode. Now let's look at a piece with and without modulation. I absolutely love the modulation on this and you can get some really eerie weird things with it.
Now it's time for the build notes. If you don't give a shit about this kind of thing, you can click the skip button. We don't want you here anyway. At the end, I'll give my thoughts and feelings about the pedal. This is a straightforward build, even with the addition of the mod. 1776 gives you an excellent build guide as well as a bill of materials. You'll have to build your own cart for parts, but you can do it. I believe in you, even if your mother doesn't. For the most part, I use KOA resistors, Panasonic and Wyma caps, and Switchcraft jacks. Don't be surprised if you can't find all one brand for a part type. You're gonna end up sourcing your parts from different sites. They're gonna have different brand names, different sizes, different tolerances. This is what makes your pedal unique. Here are some things from the build that I think are worth highlighting. Let's start with the H11 F1 optocoupler. An optocoupler is a semiconductor that allows an electrical signal to be transmitted between two isolated circuits. It has an LED that emits infrared light and a photosensitive device that detects light from the LED. As we mentioned before, this has a PT2399 CMOS. These are digital delay processors that are used to emulate analog bucket brigade delay based circuits. These parts are known to motorboat sometimes. I haven't actually had this happen in any of my builds. The PT2399s I've used have been from Small Bear and I haven't hit a motorboater yet. You want to make sure that this one is socketed in case you get a lemon. I like switches that click. I'm currently working on an Elma Type 4 ASMR video. You're the only one I've shown this to. The Multiplex uses a plastic construction 4P3T. Despite being made of plastic, it has a nice torque. It's a non-shorting switch. Non-shorting switches are often referred to as break before make. The connection the switch is making is temporarily broken between positions. 4P3T means it has four poles in three throws. Poles are the number of circuits the switch can control. Throws are the amount of contact points. Make sure you keep the metal ring on top of the switch in place when assembling the pedal. The drill guide included in the build guide is excellent. The mod guide also includes a drill guide as well. I highly recommend using these in conjunction with a drill press. If you don't have a drill press, make sure to clamp or fix your enclosure to something so your holes end up clean and where you want them. You can fit both the multiplex board and mod board inside of a 1790 enclosure with a little room to play. The V-adjust is used to calibrate the pre-charged circuit of the momentary foot switch. The momentary switch is used to speed up the tape speed. I'll show you how the switch works. The mod is an optional board that can be used with the multiplex. The mod provides a chorus-like effect and can be used to modify delay one or delay two. There is also an off position. The mod provides speed and depth controls. One of my favorite features of this mod is the LED which pulses giving a visual indication of speed. One of the key components to this board is the Vactrol. Vactrols are pretty cool. A Vactrol is an LDR and a light source stuffed inside of a small, lightproof enclosure. You can roll your own Vactrols, but for my build, I purchased one. I want to highlight the switch I used for the mod. As you can see, this is a toggle switch designed for a PCB. That's why it has pins instead of solder lugs. I ordered the wrong one and I had to make do with what I had. Save yourself the hassle and make sure you get the right switch for the job. And just remember, sometimes you can make different parts work. So, is the 1776 as good as a Benson or an RE201 or an Echoplex? I honestly don't know. I'm never going to have the opportunity to play one of those, and I don't have the cash to throw down and buy one myself. So, what I can say is I really enjoy how this pedal sounds, and I think it gives you a lot of interesting and unique sounds to play around with at a very affordable price point. There's lots of different sweet spots to hang out in which offer up different accents to your playing, and in some instances, actually force your playing into new and uncharted territory. 
It ranges from trippy to commanding to eerie. Most importantly, it's fun to use. And at a fraction of the price of the machines it emulates, you really can't go wrong with the 1776 multiplex. Thanks for hanging out. Subscribe to my channel. It's gonna be great.